Hello, this is Tatiana with Truth Ball in Search of Goof, and this is, I think I'm just going to have to say this is an episode of Goof Goofball Chronicles, um, and I think I'm going to call it Perilous Times and Perilous Men and Women. Okay, uh, and it's going in the Goofball Chronicles. For those of you who may have just subscribed, this is where I kind of put my random stuff that just happened to me that I'm working through. Okay, so this is, uh, this, <sighs> I know, I'm so private, so I'm kind of like always trying to figure out like, well, how do I say, how do I explain? Okay, so basically I'm gonna say what happened. As in the grocery style. All right. So we spend all of our time uh, studying about narcissism and uh, all our spare moments working through all of the hard things and what am I going to do in the future? And then you see somebody in the grocery store and it's all of a sudden like, oh, what am I going to do now? Put it into action, right? And I'm like, all right, what kind of weaponry do I got in my satchel? Right? Hiya! I've been studying. <laughs> and it just doesn't work that way. So this is what happened. This is what happened. So I am back in a town that I used to live in where I used to teach. So it has been months of seeing students all grown up and I'm just so amazed and proud of all my kids and uh, and just seeing, you know, golly, actually, like, a lot of my friends, I come back into town and they're, like, higher up in the political hierarchy. I'm like, dang, what have I been doing? Okay. So, it really has been awesome for months and months and months. So, I didn't even think about this until I'm in the grocery store, yo. And I'm like, you know, I'm in the grocery store for, like, a couple minutes. I got to run in and run out. I got to get just a couple things. And there I see on the horizon this total bitch total bitch that I used to teach her kids I taught one of her kids at one school and then when I had um, started teaching at another school I ended up teaching the younger sibling the kids are awesome the kids were just wonderful and I used to look at the husband and think, why is he with her? She's like, kind of, I used to, I was like, I don't know. Okay, so this is the deal. So I'll just give you a little bit of gossipy background without saying who and what and all that kind of stuff. But this is the deal. Because I could not remember what I didn't like about her. Praise the loud. I don't remember what I didn't like about her. I just remembered that overwhelming fear and dislike and I can only tell you two things that I remembered and then finally I just said God I don't want to remember I, I don't want to remember this that that is years ago bullshit and I'm not teaching her kids so I don't have to put up with her so I do remember her making some kind of joke about because I think she had a carry concealed weapons permit or something but I remember her making a joke in my classroom in front of my children about having that weapon and me truly feeling like I already kind of think she might be a psychopath and I feel like her joke is passive aggressively being threatening and just it registering in my mind the safety of my children I clearly remember that because, of course, those are my kids. So I do remember that clearly. And then the other thing that I remember was that at some point she had gotten busted by one of the church board leaders because I taught in a private Christian school. So it was kind of, you know, it's not like a big, big, you know, industrial sized school. It's a very small building. And I don't know if she had keys to the building. I don't know if she stole keys to the building. I really don't know how this happened. But the school board leader had told me, 
that she had been in the principal's office going through the um, students' personal files. And at the time, I just remember, th like, well, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> uh, this is not okay. I don't want her volunteering in my classroom. I don't want her around. Um, and uh, anywho, so I do remember those two social infractions. I cannot remember what she did to me personally, but I'm glad for that. Either way, I'm in the grocery store, and I can see her, and actually it wasn't... I didn't recognize her first, I recognized the husband. And I'm thinking, oh my god, that's the dad. And then so I look to the left and I'm like, ugh, I can see her. And um, she hasn't seen me yet. The husband has probably seen me and I can say that I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm almost unrecognizable to, you know, what I used to look like um, when I was a teacher. So, and I can validate that. I've met plenty of people who completely don't recognize me and don't remember who I am and I have to remind them and and in fact I remember even saying to someone like it's Tatiana and I'm having a conversation and and he still had to stop like I just still I can't even believe it's you <laughs> so anywho I'm going on that I'm hoping that they don't recognize me so I fully pulled the like I'm super interested in what is ever on that aisle and I'm just gonna turn and I was able to avoid seeing them. And I'm going down the aisle thinking, Lord, I, I, don't, I don't have this. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I remember when I was dealing with drama when I was a teacher at that first school. And I had said, God, you got to teach me how to deal with these, these particular parents, the, the particular parents that were doing, you know, now I can look back and see, okay, yep, I remember there was a one ringleader of the drama that I was dealing with and that ringleader is a narcissist okay now that all makes sense at the time I was like this is stressing me out and I don't know how to deal with it and I can't seem to convince anybody it needs to get fixed anyhow so she was one of those one of the posse anyway so back then I had prayed you know God you got to teach me how to do this otherwise I got to give up teaching I can't do this okay so Eventually, I did give up teaching because of the drama. So, this was the dealio. So, I'm going down the aisle, and I'm like, oh, this is so fascinating. Yes, you know, I'm back in this town, and uh, yes, you have given me skills about people like that. Okay, that's good. But, I still have no idea how to deal with this in the moment. So, I was able to avoid them and then I was in another part of the store and then and they were checking out so later on I was in another part of the store and I see the husband walking by himself so I have to do this thing again and I'm pretty sure he recognizes me worse than that I'm thinking is it possible that she told him because he really is just a she he's wrapped around her finger so I thought it could be, you know, that she was like, is that Tatiana? Can you, you know, you go down. Go see if you can find her. Get a good look at her. That is the kind of thing that this woman would do. So then I'm like paranoid, right? I'm like, yes, she would do that. Um, maybe it's just in my head. Maybe I'm kind of freaking out. Because <laughs> I really do not want any contact with this woman at all whatsoever. So kind of let it go and then last night while I'm going to sleep I was thinking about it and getting into that codependent carousel of obsessing about it oh no what happens I didn't even think about that you know I've had such a wonderful time seeing people that I know and love I'm totally unprepared for the people I don't like and were not kind to me you know and honestly babes there there was some terrible terrible things you know that co-workers or parents, whatever, drama, you know. I've had a lot of bad, bad crap. I gave up teaching. That's how bad it was. And I love teaching. I love teaching. So thank you for giving me an outlet <laughs> on my channel. So, anywho, I'm going to sleep and, and this is what I'm doing, girlfriends and guy friends. I'm obsessing like a codependent because in my mind, 
much in my mind I've been approached, you know, by, you know, an offensive person, you know, that triggers defensiveness in me and everything. She didn't, but in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, what's going to happen? I know I'm going to run into her eventually again, and then how am I going to deal with it? So in my mind, I'm obsessing my responses. And of course, my responses are, okay, here, I'm just going to vent them. If I can. I'm not as angry as I was when I was going to sleep, but when I was going to sleep, I was thinking, <laughs> I, was, I thought if she came up, if she had come up to my face, what would I have said? And I imagine spitting, spitting in her face. Okay, then I was like, oh, that's too rude. I could spit at her feet. And I'm like, I wonder if I would get kicked out of the grocery store for that. Then I'm like, what would I say? Like, are you a nice person yet? <laughs> or, God. Thankfully, I can't remember too many of them. I was mad. I was mad, mad, mad. I thought about grabbing her husband. Instead of acknowledging her existence, I would have just grabbed the husband and said, I want you to know that the Lord would forgive you if you divorced that thing. Say hi to the boys for me. <laughs> I just... All right, there, I vented it. Okay, because remember what I told you. When you're dealing with anger, etc., you want to just journal it out and rip it up. So, okay, everybody, forget that I said that. I'm just going to rip that up. Okay, this is the dealio. So I go to sleep thinking about that, and I know I'm obsessing. I know I'm obsessing. I know that I'm, you know, and I'm trying to pray about it. And, and I know that I know that I know those are not good responses, right? When we talk about action versus reaction, all of those things that I thought are me reacting to fear, uh, you know, disgust, you know, all of these negative things. It's reacting. So I'm like, okay, well, thankfully she didn't approach me. So I have time to think about this because I do need to think about what my action is going to be. And then I'm like, look, if I, when I truly, truly have no idea what to do, I do go to the Bible or what I know that the Bible says. Right. And, and I do obey what I know I'm supposed to do, even though I don't like it. And there are a lot of times that I obey the Bible and I don't like it. So I'm sitting there having that moment of rage and then thinking, uh, you know, that the Bible says, you know, to do all you can to get along with one another. And I'm just like, that's really not the answer that I want, but I know that that's the truth. So what would I do to best get along with this person? And then I'm thinking, well, I could be friendly. And I'm thinking, no, I don't want her to feel like she can approach me in the grocery store because her presence is so disturbing to me. So, yeah, I could fluff her, but I don't want to attract more. She'd probably ask me questions. I don't want to talk to her about my private stuff. And the more that she talks to me, the more that I'm going to have to put up boundaries. And she's going to, no matter what, Huns, she's going to gossip about me. She is going to gossip about me, whether she knows the truth, whether she comes up with a lie, whether she's talking to me or not, whether I reject her or I hug her and pretend that we're close friends. The woman is going to gossip about me, no matter what. So... How do I get along with this person the best? And I finally just, I, I fell asleep. But this is the thing. When I woke up, even, you know, before waking up, while I'm in that waking up state where I don't really realize that I'm awake, all of a sudden it comes back to me this verse that I had just mentioned in one of my other, I think in that last Goofball Chronicle video, the one with the crown at the end, where I'm talking about um, 
uh, prince, it starts off with princess, but I'm talking about being a warrior. So I'm like, Lord, you got to tell me, what is my weaponry in this battle? And boom, right there while I'm waking up, it comes to me, the other part of that verse. So I had been talking about, let me see, I'm like looking for my reference material here. Okay, because in that video, I'm talking about 2 Timothy 3.1. Thank you, peeps who are not Christian, but listen to the message. It's, it's kind of, it's pretty cool. So, so the verse that I was mentioning, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, is, I'm going to put it up here. Can I make eye contact with you? <laughs> All right, hang in there. I'm looking down. But I know, but know this, that in the last days, peril, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, etc., etc. Okay, and I was talking about that particular verse because I'm saying that what is being a lover of yourself is being a narcissist. Okay, being a narcissist. So I, that's what I'm thinking about this woman in the grocery store and the fucking cunt who made my life a miserable mess who's definitely a narc, and then this woman who's, I'm really kind of like, she's some kind of psychopath, some kind of, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if she's a narc narcissist, but there's something kooky in her head, and dangerous, anywho, so I'm remembering this, right, and I'm thinking about that verse, okay, the last days, perilous times, men will be lovers of themselves, so I'm like, how does that story end? What did you say to do, God? What did you say to do specifically about the men who are lovers of themselves? So if you want to read it, it's 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, and then you get down to verse... I'm just going to read it to you, Hans. Okay, so those of you who aren't Christian, I apologize. I apologize if this is a super religious video. Um, come back. Come back later. Okay. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, dis brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, Having a form of godliness, those of you people who dislike Christians, maybe this is who you've come across. People who have a form of godliness, but deny its power. And from such people, turn away. Okay, and that ends up in verse 5. From such people, turn away. Okay, I like literally jumped out of bed this morning. <laughs> Because I was like, I need help. I don't know what to do because I am I want to react. So give me something that's an action. And so that's all I had remembered was, I know he says something about lovers of, the, of themselves. And I know if I keep reading, he said something about what to do. All I remembered was the part where it said, and from such people. And I was like, what do you do from such people? And I jumped out of bed to grab my Bible. Turn away. Yo, I just want to say, totally okay to pretend that there's something super interesting down the paper towel aisle because I'm turning away. I don't want any communication with this person. If she comes up to me, of course in the moment, you know, I'm going to need to know exactly how to do it, but... I'm giving myself permission to turn away, whether it's a curt answer like, oh, you look very good, nice to see you, say hi to the boys for me, and turn away. I don't want contact with this person. Okay, then, and uh, I also, since I had read it this morning, I wanted to add on the last part. So, um, for the viewers, because this is the thing, why? we obsess about the mean thing we want to say what they deserve which is a fucking wad of spit to her fucking face that is what she deserves vengeance is mine saith the lord 
Spitting in her face would feel really good, you guys. It would feel really good. Okay. But I can't do that. And really, truly, it's only going to ruin my own reputation. It is. Because I have no self-control. Okay? And I don't want to be that way. Okay. But this is the thing. To encourage. At least it encourages me. When you get down to verse 9, it says, um, da 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 they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all, as, as um, Jans and John Ray's also was. So I'll repeat that. They, all of the things that I listed, but I'm going to include the lovers of themselves, they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all. And this is what we have to remind ourselves over and over and over again when we're dealing with a smear campaign like I did that many years ago a total smear campaign a smear campaign that was bad enough that some of my students my little babies came and accused me and I'm looking at their little faces thinking who put that evil lie in your head about me and there's nothing I can do about it and then they move away I have prayed for my babies. They moved away and I thought, I'm so heartbroken that your parents filled you with a lie because I loved you. And you're believing that I don't love you. Love you. Care about you. Forgive you for the accusation. Okay? But eventually, they will grow up. Or they have grown up. All my babies are grown they have grown up and they are starting to see what their parents have done. I don't need my validation, you know, but I know that eventually they will reveal who they are. Okay, so, and that, so that reminded me and kind of what triggered me wanting to do a video because I wanted to give a couple of examples that this is true. It is true that eventually they reveal themselves. I know um, I chatted quite a bit with a girlfriend of mine that's in a support group with me and we have talked about you know what does happen to narcissists over time they end up alone it might take a long time but eventually a narcissist wears out their welcome with everybody and they end up alone they do end up alone or in a highly dysfunctional relationship highly and they're alone they're alone. And besides that, even the time that you spent with them, they're kind of alone. Because they're all they can do to keep you around is to fuck with you all the time. Because they have nothing. There's nothing in there. There's nothing in there to love. And they know it. And they're terrified. So they fuck with people to hold you. Because they'd be fucking alone. Eventually they end up alone. So this was the deal. I'm looking at my notes over here that I had to write down this morning. Okay, so... So, 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 eventually their, um, you know, their folly will be known. So, and in fact, last night too, now that I'm thinking about it, a girlfriend of mine had posted that song. She plays it on the violin. Very beautiful. But she had posted it on Facebook, True Colors, you know, the Cindy Lauper song. But it's beautiful on, uh, I mean, both versions are nice, but the, on the violin. Anywho, and I'm looking at that thinking, yep, that's right. Eventually they reveal their true colors. So have hope in that, okay? And uh, so then I was thinking about that school. Since I couldn't, the second school that I worked at where their parent was there, um, I was uh, still, I couldn't remember what it was, you know, specifically that she had done. But I do remember that she assisted the secretary at that school. <laughs> and so I still couldn't remember what nightmare she was, but I do remember the secretary because my girlfriend that I taught with, uh, uh, she was another teacher at the school. She would come to me and she would say, I don't understand the secretary. She's so passive aggressive. I need this, whatever it was that she did, some kind of a math sheet or whatever it is that, you know, that the teacher printed every day, you know, whatever day of the week. Um, let me give you an example so I'm not so obscure. Um, let's say that she had 
a, a math sheet that was a special one that she did every Friday. And so she's going to need, um, however many students, a blue sheet of paper per student, and then she would use, I think she would do like the whole month in advance, so they'd all be ready and just stored. So we're talking, you know, like, uh, let's say, let's say if she had 30 students, we're talking, you know, uh, you know, 30, 60, 90, 120, 120 blue sheets of paper that she's going to prepare at the beginning of the month and just grab as she goes. And the secretary used to like really be a passive aggressive biatch. We didn't call her a biatch because we were at a Christian school, but she was super, super passive aggressive and was like, and eventually, I think after she had done this two or three months, she comes to me and says, she won't print my whatever math sheet on blue paper because she says that I have exceeded my blue paper allotment. <laughs> I mean, it is made up. Like, I didn't know when we got hired we had a blue paper allotment. Shouldn't this be in the handbook? Just, you're kidding, right? I know that many of you have dealt with ludicrous effing fucking games from a narcissist. And the blue paper one was an endless source of fucking humor. So, of course, what do you do? I need this on my blue sheet of paper. It's how I want it. I'm not invading anybody's rights or space or anything like that in order to do this the way that I want to. It's already a system. I don't need to break my system because this person is being passive aggressive narc. Okay. So So she goes and buys her own ream of paper. What was it? Like at the time, you know, like $2.50. She goes and buys her own package of blue paper and just prints it herself after the secretary went home. <laughs> just. Okay, so from of such people, turn away. Blue paper allotment arguments are just not worth your time. Find a solution, walk away, and eventually their folly will be known. So I'll tell you another story that happened. Ooh, I have two stories. Okay, so here was another passive-aggressive dude who was actually the husband of this passive-aggressive wife. Now he, coming back to it, I'm like, is that, is that a narc? Was that a narc? Very interesting. So the pastor of this place was, how much information can I give? It was a Lutheran school. That's a lot of info. Okay, it's a Lutheran school. I'm not Lutheran but they had Christians of varying denominations. And so I'm sitting there, and they usually do, most church schools do some kind of a blessing over the teachers, kind of a special worship day or whatever. So it's part of the church services. So I'm sitting there with one of my teachers that I had worked with, and we're, we had both been hired at that school again. And so it was, uh, how did that work? Was she hired there? Because she had never been through this before. She might have... I don't know how this happened, that both of us were at this um, dedication ceremony for the teachers um, for the first time together. And we're sitting there, and it's, you know, all of us on the front pew, and uh, And he's talking, and, and it's Lutheran, so it's kind of, in some ways, to me, it's very close to Catholic, but not. It is a Protestant religion, but the behavior to me was like, oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm new to this. Oh, oh well, we're standing? Oh, okay. Oh, we're speaking? And we were both just, I felt like it was an aerobic workout, just trying to, you know, you don't want to offend any of the, because the whole, everybody, the whole congregation is behind us. We're in the front row. And I'm like, we're like holding it together and kind of just trying to like, oh, stand, okay. And so we're both kind of frazzled trying to keep up with what's going on. And all of a sudden, because I'm frazzled, I'm not thinking clearly. All of a sudden, I hear him say, in Christ's stead, I forgive your sins. And I jab her. I'm like, 
Did he just forgive our sins? <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. And she's like, I'm not exactly sure. Let's talk about it later. <laughs> and I'm like, Lutherans believe that somebody on earth can forgive sins? Oh my God. <laughs> forgive the pun. So, we'll talk about it later. And over time, I found that some Lutheran churches believe that and some do not. This pastor did. And in fact, I think I had talked to somebody and they had said the previous pastor did not believe that he had the power to forgive sins. This pastor did. And I'm sitting there, you know, I mean, of course I had to contemplate that. And I thought, I can see somebody having the behaviors that this guy has, which is out of control, arrogant, out of control, arrogant, because if I had the power, power to forgive your sins, I could see that going to my head. I could see that kind of messing with my self-confidence, y'all. Holy shit storm. <laughs> I could not believe it. So, one of the many arrogant asshole things this guy would do. At the time I was married and my ex-husband's name is Dutch. So he asks me in the hallway, and I just, the guy creeped me out. I did not like him at all. But he asked me in the hallway, how do you pronounce your last name? So I clearly state to him, this is how you pronounce my name. He says, oh, because it looks like a German name. Now, German and Dutch is very close. But the ending of my name at the time is, compl is pronounced completely differently. And so I repeated it to him. This is how you pronounce it. He's Dutch. Every time I ran into him in the hallway after that, he would always call me Mrs. So-and-so and repeat my name to me in German with a German accent. And the first couple times I'm like, I already corrected him once. Was that an accident? Is he stupid? And after a while I realized he is just an arrogant asshole and enjoying digging. Okay, so of such turn away, and eventually their folly will be known. The dude did get fired. <laughs> All right, then another person fucked with me at that school. Of such turn away, I resigned. She got fired in the middle of the next year, okay? When everybody else saw what I had told them I had told them I'm resigning because of this, 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 this. And nobody believed me and I dealt with a smear campaign and it was bad, 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 bad. And then she did the same crap to somebody else and got fired. Okay, eventually there will be vindication. I would love to see justice. We don't always get to see justice. but. You have to hold on to those. At least I'm going to say that for those of you who are Christian and dealing with as much stuff as I have. The struggle of, you know, being a good person to everyone and loving everyone. And how do you deal with someone who is truly, truly evil and dark and mean? Okay, so... Did I say it? Did I say it only 10 million times to help it sink in? Because, as I say, this is part of my own coping strategy. So I need it. I need it to sink into my head. Of such people, turn away. And eventually their folly will be known. Because the moment that I run into her at the grocery store or any of the other bitches that fucked with me, I need to be ready. I need to be ready to say... I have a right to turn away. I don't have a right to spit in their face. But I have a right to turn away. I can be polite, but I can be curt and move on to the, to the best of my abilities in the moment. So those of us who need that anchor of the word and the truth, 
to give ourselves permission to not be codependent. Oh my God, how are you doing? Lord, I'm going to pray for them. Please help me. Please help me witness to them. I need to say this and that and the other thing. And how can I be helpful to them and connect with them and be part of their lives? And, you know, um, you know, Lord, you put them in my path. So, you know, I'm, you must want something for me to do with them. Of such people turn away. You have permission to turn away. Okay. And I'm going to end with after I read that and felt a lot better, then I watched a Joel Osteen and I really liked what he said about being a brighter light in the dark places. Okay? I have given you permission. You don't have to go and be that, you know, candle just for that one miserable, rotten fucking person that you need to do all this, that, and the other thing in order to save their soul while somehow they're extracting the very life out of you. That's not what God's asking you to do. But you can be a bright light in those dark places. And so when he said that, I thought, you know, what did I do? How did I deal with those mean people when I was teaching at that school? Obviously, there were a lot of mean people at that school. Um, and then I remembered, um, because I couldn't connect with a lot of people, um... I do remember that, you know, in that office where that passive-aggressive blue paper Nazi worked, she, we had mailboxes. And so actually everybody associated with the school, church board, you know, the whole, everybody has a mailbox in there. And so, you know, for whatever reason or whatever occasion, you know, I'd make little things and just bring in candies, whatever. Anyway, this is the thing that you can do. And I do discuss this in my last uh, video about passive aggressiveness and not being passive aggressive, taking responsibility for your own behavior. Do not be passive aggressive in your workplace. I do remember, for example, malt at least once a month. I put it on my calendar at least, no, I, it was on my calendar once a week to do this in my school was to bring a candy or a treat or a card or whatever it was and everybody got one. Everybody got one, all the mailboxes and me praying as I put them in there. And it doesn't have to be intense, but it would be, you know, some well wish, you know, just a positive thought for everybody. Everybody. Yes. Having a positive thought for some of those people was difficult. Anywho, but the thing was, is it was as I've talked about before, respecting myself. Who, who am I? I am kind. I am loving. I do like thinking about happy thoughts for people. I don't like spending an hour in bed thinking about spitting in some woman's face. I don't like that. I like the fact that I cannot remember what she did to me that triggered me when I saw her. I'm grateful for that. That's who I want to be. I don't want to remember why I was triggered. I just want a solution. Okay? I want to be responsible for my own behavior. Okay, that is what I had to get out. What I jumped out of bed, y'all, in my jam jams, and had to, like, start fighting. <laughs> Give me some strategies here. I'm a warrior. All right, my loves. I am wishing you much love. Right to the heart. Mwah.